Hey folks, it's your favorite truth teller here, and boy do I have a story for you. You know that virus that's been going around? The one that shut down the world and made everyone lose their damn minds? Yeah, let's talk about that. Now, I don't want to make light of the people who have gotten sick or lost loved ones. That's a tragedy, and my heart goes out to them. But let's be real here. The way the media and the government have been hyping this thing up is like the Black Death on steroids. It's like they want us all to believe that we're one cough away from the end of the world. And let's not forget about the panic buying toilet paper, really? Did the virus cause explosive diarrhea that I missed in the news? It's like people are stocking up on toilet paper like they're preparing for the apocalypse. And you know what? Maybe they are. Maybe the real virus is stupidity, and it's been around for a lot longer than this current outbreak. But you know what's really funny about all of this? The way that the government has used this pandemic as an excuse to expand their power and control over us. It's like, hey, we're just trying to keep you safe. Don't mind the surveillance cameras and the drones and the mandatory vaccines. We're just looking out for you, buddy. But you know what the real virus is? Fear. It's the fear that's been spread around like wildfire. It's the fear that's made us forget how to be human. It's the fear that's made us turn on each other instead of coming together to face this thing. And that's a shame because if there's one thing that humans are really good at, it's coming together in times of crisis. So let's not let this pandemic divide us. Let's use it as an opportunity to remember what's really important in life. Love, laughter, and a good fart joke. Because as I always say, it's just a ride. And if we're going to ride it out, we might as well do it with a smile on our face and a roll of toilet paper under our arm. Let's talk about 9-11, shall we? The event that changed everything, and by everything, I mean the amount of shampoo you can bring on a plane. Can't let those terrorists get too lathery now, can we? But seriously, folks, the government's official story of 9-11 is about as believable as a Hollywood script. I mean, they want us to believe that a bunch of guys armed with box cutters were able to hijack four planes and fly them into buildings? It's like they watched one too many Die Hard movies and thought it was a documentary. And let's not forget about Building 7. That thing collapsed faster than a house of cards in a hurricane. The official explanation? Office fires. Yeah, because everyone knows how flammable paper clips and post-it notes are. But you know what's even more ridiculous than the official story? The way the government used 9-11 as an excuse to start a war? It's like they couldn't wait to invade someone. Who cares who did it? Let's just go blow someone up. And don't even get me started on the Patriot Act. That thing is about as patriotic as a Frenchman at a hot dog eating contest. Land of the free? More like land of the monitored and controlled. But you know what really grinds my gears? The way that anyone who questions the official story is labeled a conspiracy theorist. It's like, hey, I'm just asking questions here. I'm not saying it was aliens or anything. It's like they're trying to stifle dissent and critical thinking, and that's just un-American. Look, I'm not saying that 9-11 was an inside job or anything like that, but I am saying that we need to be asking questions and demanding answers. And if the government can't give us a straight answer, well, maybe we need to start looking elsewhere. Like, I don't know, the guys who claim they faked the moon landing. At least they seem to know what they're doing. Hey there, folks. You know, it's been a crazy year. We've had pandemics and lockdowns and toilet paper shortages and murder hornets. Murder hornets for crying out loud. Is this a nature documentary or a horror movie? I don't even know anymore. But you know what they say, laughter is the best medicine. And I don't know about you, but I've been laughing a lot lately. Not because the world is hilarious, mind you, but because sometimes you just gotta laugh to keep from crying. I mean, have you seen some of the stuff people are doing in quarantine? We've got folks making sourdough bread from scratch like they're pioneers on the Oregon Trail. We've got people binge-watching so much in Netflix that they're starting to confuse their own lives with TV shows. And let's not forget the Zoom calls. Oh, the Zoom calls. I gotta tell you, folks, I've been on some Zoom calls that felt like they lasted longer than the pandemic itself. You know the ones I'm talking about, the ones where people forget to mute themselves and you can hear their kids screaming in the background, or the ones where everyone's trying to talk at once and it's like a virtual version of the Tower of Babel. And don't even get me started on the virtual backgrounds. I've seen people with beach backgrounds, outer space backgrounds, even backgrounds that make it look like they're sitting in a cafe in Paris. Newsflash, folks, we know you're not in Paris. You're in your pajamas in your living room. But you know what? As crazy as things have been, we're making it work. We're finding ways to stay connected and stay sane. And that's something to be proud of. 
Because when it comes down to it, we're all in this together. We're all doing our best to get through this crazy ride we call life. And as always, I'll be here with a little bit of humor and a lot of heart. Because if we can laugh through the madness, we can make it through anything. Stay safe out there, folks. Hey there, YouTube. It's your old pal Bill Hicks coming to you from beyond the grave. That's right. I'm still here, still talking, still trying to make sense of this crazy world we live in. And let me tell you, folks, it's gotten even crazier since I left. I mean, we've got a pandemic going on now. A pandemic. You know what we used to call pandemics when I was alive? Science fiction movies. And don't even get me started on the politicians. I swear, these people are like the cast of a bad reality show. And I should know, I did my fair share of reality TV when I was alive. But you know what, YouTube? I'm not here to complain. I'm here to share some wisdom with you. Because even in the darkest of times, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And that light is you. Yes, you, the person watching this video right now. You have the power to change the world and you don't even realize it. You see, the great thing about YouTube is that it's a platform for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what you believe in. You can make a video and share your ideas with the world. And that's something that should be celebrated. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of garbage on YouTube, too. I've seen my fair share of cat videos and prank videos and ASMR videos. But there's also a lot of amazing content out there. There are people using this platform to educate, to inspire, to entertain, and to make a difference. And that's what it's all about, folks. That's what life is all about. Making a difference. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this. Keep making those videos, keep sharing your ideas, keep speaking your truth, because you never know who you might inspire or what kind of impact you might have. And as always, keep a sense of humor about it all, because life is too short to take it too seriously. Thanks for tuning in, YouTube. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the podcast, folks. It's your old buddy, Bill Hicks, coming at you with another dose of truth and humor. And let me tell you, I've got a bone to pick with all you doomsday preppers out there. You know who you are. You're the ones who spend all your time and money stocking up on supplies, building bomb shelters, and getting ready for the end of the world. And then what happened? Nothing. Nada. Zip. Zilch. The world didn't end. In fact, it's still here. And it's still spinning. And it's still as messed up as ever. Now, I'm not saying I'm surprised. I mean, this whole 2012 thing was a load of crap from the start. Some ancient calendar that supposedly predicted the end of the world? Give me a break. If those ancient people were so smart, how come they couldn't predict their own downfall? And if the world was really going to end, why bother preparing for it? It's not like you're going to survive anyway, unless you're planning on starting your own post-apocalyptic community, in which case, good luck with that. And then there were all the conspiracy theories. You know the ones I'm talking about. The ones that said the government knew the world was going to end and was preparing for it in secret. The ones that said aliens were going to save us. The ones that said we were all going to ascend to a higher plane of consciousness. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, folks, but none of that happened either. The only thing that happened on December 21st, 2012, was that a bunch of people realized they'd wasted a lot of time and money on a bunch of nonsense. But you know what? That's okay. Because sometimes we need these wake-up calls. Sometimes we need to be reminded that we're not in control of everything that the universe has a way of laughing at our plans. And maybe, just maybe, we can learn something from all of this. Maybe we can learn to live in the moment, to appreciate the beauty of the world we have right now, to stop worrying about the future or the past or some Mayan calendar. Maybe we can learn to laugh at ourselves and our silly obsessions with the end of the world. Because at the end of the day, folks, it's all just a ride. And the best thing we can do is enjoy it while it lasts. Hey there, my fellow truth seekers. It's Bill Hicks back with another episode of the podcast, and this week we're talking about fake news. You know, that thing that used to be called propaganda until the powers that be realized they could get away with calling it something else. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Bill, isn't everything fake news these days? How do we even know what's real anymore? And you're not wrong. It seems like every time you turn on the TV or scroll through your social media feed... Someone is trying to sell you a version of the truth that suits their own agenda. But that's nothing new, folks. The only thing that's new is the speed and scale at which fake news can spread these days. Thanks, Internet. So what do we do about it? Well, for starters, we can start being more skeptical. 
we can start fact-checking our sources and not just relying on the ones that confirm what we already believe. We can start reading beyond the headlines and the sound bites and actually dig into the nuance and complexity of the issues at hand. And we can start calling out the bullshit when we see it instead of just shrugging our shoulders and saying, oh well, that's just how things are. But here's the thing, folks. The real danger of fake news isn't just that it's spreading lies and misinformation. It's that it's eroding our trust in each other and in our institutions. It's making us more divided, more polarized, more cynical. And that's exactly what the people in power want. They want us to be so busy fighting each other over fake news that we don't notice when they're robbing us blind or sending us off to war. So let's not fall for it, folks. Let's stay vigilant. Let's stay curious. Let's stay human. And let's keep spreading the truth, even when it's inconvenient or uncomfortable, because that's the only way we're ever going to build a better world. And speaking of spreading the truth, if you're enjoying this podcast, be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. And I'd also like to give a shout out to this week's sponsor, Good Sense Toothpaste, because if you're going to brush your teeth, you might as well do it sensibly. Thanks, Good Sense. And thanks to all of you for listening. This has been episode 295 of the Bill Hicks podcast. And as always, I'll see you on the other side. Hey, folks, it's Bill Hicks, and I got to say, what the hell is going on with Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien? I mean, I know we're living in a world where TV hosts are the new kings, but this is just ridiculous. And, you know, I happen to be good friends with Conan. We go way back. We even did a little tour together once. And let me tell you, that guy is the real deal. He's a true original, a comic genius, and he's got a heart as big as Texas. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. But, Bill, it's just show business. These things happen. It's all about ratings and money and contracts. And, yeah, that's part of it for sure. But there's also something deeper going on here. Something about loyalty and integrity and standing up for what's right. And that's where Jay Leno really dropped the ball, in my opinion. You see, Jay and Conan used to be friends, too. They even used to do bits together on the old Tonight Show. But then Jay went and did what Jay always does. He played the game, he made the deals, he undercut the competition. And when it came time for him to retire, he couldn't let go. He had to have one last hurrah, even if it meant screwing over his friend and colleague in the process. And you know what? That's just not cool, man. That's not how you treat people you care about. That's not how you leave a legacy. Now, I know Conan will be okay. He's got his own show now, and it's a damn good one. And he's got his fans and his colleagues and his integrity intact. But that doesn't make what happened any less of a shame. And it doesn't make Jay Leno any less of a weasel. In fact, it reminds me of something Conan once said about Jay. You can't be friends with someone who is competing with you for the same job. It's not healthy. And you know what, Conan? You were right. Jay might have won the battle, but you're the one who's winning the war. Keep doing your thing, brother. And to all of you out there listening, stay true to yourself and don't let the weasels get you down. This has been Bill Hicks, and I'll see you on the other side. Hey folks, it's Bill Hicks, and can we talk about the music of the last decade? I mean, what the hell happened? I remember back in my day we had real musicians playing real instruments, making real music. But now, now we've got auto-tuned, overproduced, corporate-backed puppets singing about nothing. I mean... Have you heard this Katy Perry, this Miley Cyrus, this Justin Bieber? It's like someone fed them a steady diet of cotton candy and Pepsi and told them to go make music. And the sad thing is people eat it up. They gobble it down like it's the last meal on earth. They don't even realize what they're missing. The subtlety, the depth, the soul. That's the real stuff, folks. That's what music is supposed to be about. Now, I don't want to sound like some old fogey who can't appreciate new things. There are some bright spots out there, some young musicians who are keeping the flame alive. I'm thinking of folks like Jack White, the Black Keys, or Gary Clark Jr. These guys are carrying on the tradition, and they're doing it with style and authenticity. But they're the exceptions, not the rule. And don't even get me started on the so-called EDM scene. What a joke. It's just a bunch of people doing drugs and jumping up and down to repetitive beats. That's not music, that's just noise pollution. And you know what? If that's what the kids are into these days, I weep for the future of music. But hey, it's just the ride, right? And if we're lucky, maybe some real musicians will come along and steer this thing back on track. Until then, turn off the radio, put on a record, and remember what real music sounds like. This has been Bill Hicks, and I'll see you on the other side.